Hello everyone, my name is Minnatullah Rashidi. I am a PhD student in the University of Saskatchewan under the supervision of Andrew Ayerson and Saman Rozavi. Our study focuses on modeling groundwater surface water interactions in the Canadian Boreal region. Wetlands are one of the landscape elements that are mainly affected by the interaction between groundwater and surface water. They have a vital role in the boreal region as they reduce the effect of floods, improve the water quality, and also store the carbon from the atmosphere. They represent about 14% of the whole area of the boreal region. Hydrologically, the wetlands interact with the surrounding uplands through the subsurface water movement. So in hydrology, we use land surface models, which are a complicated physically based model to simulate the different components of the hydrological cycle. However, these models mostly focus on the representation of vertical fluxes and most of them have poor representation of the lateral water exchange between grid cells and no account for the groundwater exchange within the subgrid scale. So our main objective here is to represent the interactions between uplands and wetlands. From the modeling perspective, we have three different modeling approaches. First is to model each of the upland and wetland independently and do not allow for water exchange between them. In this model, we assume that the groundwater from the upland is going directly into the nearest river. And this is called the uncoupling modeling approach. Second approach is to fit the simulated groundwater discharge into the wetland and account for one-way exchange from the upland to the wetland. And this is called the chain modeling approach. The third approach is the full coupling between the upland and the wetland, which allows for a two-way interaction uh, between both upland and wetland. And that uh, approach would be the most accurate option, but also the most complicated. So the main question that we aim to answer in this study how can different modeling approaches affect the simulated upland and fan systems? To answer this question, we chose the study area in the Canadian Puria region at White Gull Creek Basin area in Saskatchewan and mainly used the data from two flux towers. One is the old jack pine, uh, which represents the upland area, and the other is the fen, which represents the wetland component. Here you can see a focused view on the upland side and a real cross section of the area there. For the modeling purposes, we only considered one half of the cross section and assumed the similarity between both sides. You can see here the perceptual model of the upland fence system is shown using the two uh, views, top view and the cross-sectional view. The top view here you can see that the upland interacting with the wetland across this section through the movement of groundwater. And also in the cross-section view you can see all the vertical fluxes that contribute to the system. In our model, we mainly have two algorithms, one for the upland groundwater and the other for the fan water balance. The groundwater algorithm is based on Poznanisk equation and is used to simulate the change in the groundwater level and the groundwater discharge. The fan algorithm is based on the water balance equation and is used to simulate the change in the fan water level. To be able to compare the different modeling approaches, we developed the three conceptual models or three versions. Uh, version one is for the uncoupled approach. In this model, the upland and the fan are simulated independently with no interaction between them. For the uncoupled upland, the mesh class model, which is the Canadian land surface model, is used to generate the recharge values to drive the groundwater model. And here, for the groundwater system, we assumed an unconfined aquifer and 
assumed at the right boundary as as a no flow boundary and for the left side as a fixed head value for the fin component also also the uh, mesh model was used to get the vertical fluxes of the fin to be used in the fin water balance simulation Version 2 is for the chain model and here the upland model is the same as for version 1 and the simulated groundwater discharge is fed into the fan considering one-way uh, exchange. The third version is the fully coupled model. In this version a two-way groundwater exchange is considered. I'll start now by showing you the results of the uncoupled upland model. The model was calibrated and validated using 15,000 Monte Carlo simulations. The best run had a root mean squared error of 0.056 for calibration and 0.2 for validation. You can see here for the validation period that after the year uh, 2011, the model got exactly the same pattern of the observed groundwater table with almost constant difference between simulated and observed. And we think that is because of some errors in the driving data at these two years that affected the rest of the simulation period. Out of the 15,000 runs, we found that 70 models can be considered as behavioral as they all had a root mean squared error below 0.1. The behavioral runs were used to get the uncertainty bounds in the simulated groundwater discharge here plotted in blue and compared here with the uh, recharge values that drive the groundwater model. Also they were used to get the uncertainty bounds in the groundwater table. So actually using this model, we were able to get a lot of information about the upland component. Even we were able to have uh, information about the uh, parameters identifiability. So this plot here showed the identifiability of each parameter by plotting the parameters values versus the root mean squared error for all the uh, Monte Carlo simulations. And here the red dots represent the behavioral runs. The hydraulic conductivity and specific yield were identifiable, but the head value at the left side, the length of the aquifer, and the exact location of the piezometer were not. We also tried to plot new parameters, which are a combination of identifiable and non-identifiable parameters, such as transmissivity, diffusivity, and the characteristic time, and these three were strongly identifiable. So now let's compare between the upland model, the uncoupled, and the coupled one. The same calibration parameters from the uh, uncoupled model were used to run the fully coupled model. And this is the simulated groundwater using both the coupled and uncoupled models compared with the observations. You can see here that the coupled model has better match with the observations, but still there is no significant difference between this and the one simulated using the uncoupled model. So for the upland system, we can say that the uncoupled model is good enough and we're able to simulate the system and give up the information that we needed. It even uh, allow us to perform different analysis such as calibration, validation, uncertainty and identifiability. On the other hand, for the fan component, the uncoupled fan model, which has no groundwater inflow, wasn't able to get a reasonable results for the fan outflow and the change in the water level. As you can see that the outflow values were extremely low and the water the, uh, level in the fan is declining, which is not representing the reality. Uh, but the chained and coupled models had a reasonably good simulation of uh, the inflow, outflow, and the water levels with some differences between both. For example, looking here at the groundwater inflow, you can see that at 
year 2005, in the coupled model, the flow was reversed from the fin to the groundwater, which is, doesn't appear here in the uh, chained model, but that was only for one year of the whole simulation period. You can here also see the differences between the simulated outflow and the simulated water level in the fin. But after all, all of these are not a significant differences. Also, we compared the daily, monthly, and annually ground inflow and outflow from the fan uh, for both models, the chained and coupled. But it's obvious that there is no significant difference between the two models. So we can say here that the chain model could be good enough to simulate the fin system. So finally, as a conclusion, we can say about the uncoupled model of the upland that it was able to accurately simulate the groundwater table and identify most of the parameter. It also was able to give an R uncertainty bounds of the groundwater discharge and the groundwater table. But the full coupling between upland and the fin doesn't affect the upland significantly. So we can say that the groundwater underneath the upland can be modeled using the uncoupled approach. So uh, for the fin system, we found that the uh, uncoupled fin model can reasonably represent the fin's water level or the outflow. But when comparing the chain and coupled models, both models were able to get a good simulation of the system with no significant differences between them. So, also when modeling the fan, we found that we cannot ignore the groundwater contribution from the upland. But, on the other hand, we can use the chained model as a good enough approach to simulate the fan system. The final point we need to talk about or think about here is the accuracy and complexity, which are increasing from one model to another. And the increased complexity means the need for expensive computational resources. So the uncoupled and the chain models could be good approaches to model the complicated systems. At the end of this talk, I want to thank Alan Barr from Global Institution of Water Security for providing all the deriving data that you used in this study, and also thanks for Global Water Futures Project for funding our study. Thanks everyone for your attention.